gang, Scientific Sue is here today, meaning one thing, experiments. experiments. Oh yeah, today's scientific <laughs> assistant is Bradley. Take it away, Bradley. Hello, my name is Bradley and I love science because I love learning about fascinating facts and love doing weird and crazy experiments. And today's first experiment will be all about air pressure. Indeed it is. Sue, take it away. Let's get going. Right, we're going to do some myth busting. So okay. uh, I'm not going to use you, Bradley, because this is very dangerous. So we're okay, going to use Gorgeous George. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you see all those science, science fiction movies and they're up in space, sometimes you see them kind of jump out of the, the rocket to go and fix something and they don't have a suit on. And all they do is go, <gasps> they hold their breath and they go out, but that's not possible. Really? Absolutely not possible, because outside mm. there's no air, and it means inside us we've got all this gas that's pushing out, and outside here we've got loads of gas pushing in. So we're going to remove the gas from around gorgeous George, and we're going to see what would happen, Bradley, to you if you jumped out of the rocket without your spacesuit. This is quite dangerous, uh -oh. okay, so we're going to need to put our safety glasses okay, on. Okay, safety glasses on. Oh, here we go. Dun, dun, okay, dun, dun, you ready? Okay. Three. Two, okay. one. Keep an eye on him. Okay, gorgeous George. There he is. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. That's horrible. That's that, horrible. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's kind of gross. And look. Oh. Oh. There he is. Oh my god. It's still, there's a bubble left. All of the gas that was inside him is now expanding and filling the space. Now. <gasps> Oh. Should we should we save him? Should we let him live? No. No. <laughs> Three, two, no, no. one. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Poor gorgeous yours. So, He's not that so gorgeous so anymore. Gross. You're not so gorgeous indeed. <laughs> if we jump into a vacuum, that is what would happen to us. Ew. Oh, we will not be doing that. <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. <laughs> Sue, amazing. Bye. Thank thanks so much. What's next? Well, we finished the last one talking about vacuums. Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd look at the science and how a vacuum cleaner works. Right. Never and thought about that before. This is going to be a vacuum cleaner. Okay. okay. <laughs> Funky looking thing. In, I know. Inside a vacuum cleaner, we'll have a fan. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these polystyrene beads to represent our air molecules. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of particles in there. So it's mm -hmm. a high number, and that will be called a high pressure region. If I remove some of them, the number is lower. So therefore we say there's lower pressure. There's a lower number of them that will be able to, <laughs> to hit us. Okay. And so, um, unfortunately, we can't kind of just suck things out. Uh, we're going to need to kind of speed them up. And to do that, inside a vacuum tube, we've got a fan. So Catherine, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to spin this above your head. Okay. okay. Yeah. And as you spin it above your head, you're going to make the molecule spread out and so we're going to get low pressure. And Bradley, you're going to lift up this up and Catherine is going to be able to put the vacuum cleaner over the air that's here and hopefully we will see something funny happen when we get region of high pressure and low and pressure. Low pressure. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. So I thought you'd put your left hand in that space there. Left hand, okay. Brilliant. Your right hand above. Okay. Yeah. So practice spinning really fast. Yeehaw. Excellent. Yeehaw. And stop there. Okay. And Bradley, what I'd like you to do is come and stand here. Okay. And just lift those up a little bit so that Catherine doesn't have to bend too much. Okay. And three, two, one, go. Woo! Whoa! <laughs> it's snowing! <laughs> oh my goodness, Bradley! <laughs> I ran away what? myself there. What did we forget to use in our vacuum cleaner? <laughs> we forgot a bag. <laughs> Kids, do not try this at home without a bag. Now for another crazy experiment. Sue, what have we got? Well, I was kind of thinking, as soon as we're thinking about vacuums and, and then air pressure, and then I thought we'd move on to flight. Okay. Have you ever wondered, whenever you're in an airplane, how you stay up in the sky? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How does that work? Well, what we've done, can you hold this for me? What we've done okay. is we've shaped the wing of an airplane, the same shape as a bird. So it kind of has a bump and then it goes to a point. And as the air moves over, then it speeds up. And when air speeds up, it spreads out. So the number of molecules there is lower, and we say that's mm. low pressure. Uh -huh. So what I thought is kind of going, we go, Ooh. can you see that lift? Yeah. yeah. But it's not a very exciting lift, is it? Not really. So what yeah. I thought I'd do is I'd get something a little bit more powerful to aim onto our wing, and we're going to see if we can then get some uplift. What did okay. you have in mind? Well, I thought, <laughs> I, thought I would use one of these. 
Okay, oh, a leaf blower. A leaf blower. Oh, so, dun, dun, dun. Three, <laughs> uh -oh. two, one. Oh. Oh, here we go. So that's how a plane flies, right there. It is. <laughs> you kind of get the air moving really fast at the top. But does it crash then... land? Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully like not. This. No, my plan did that. Look, my plane. Sue, so, thank you so oh, much for calling by. My pleasure, Amazing my pleasure. Thanks, Bradley. Thank you, Bradley. Right there, Bradley. Yeah. So good. Thanks a million for coming in. You can have that map now. Yeah. <laughs> my mum needed a new map. I've got a lot of cleaning up to do today, that's for sure. Um, so remember, if you want to try out an experiment here on Kazoo, make it big, make it bold, get in touch with us through our website. Also, if you want to be um, Scientific Sue's assistant, just like Bradley, if he's going to leave, I think he likes that much, he probably won't <laughs> leave though, um, get in touch to our website and you can be part of our crazy science programme too, if you like. Now, random BT time, over to Animania. Enjoy, we've got to clean up. Oh no! <laughs> So we, are we going to feed the penguins? Yeah, we're going to give them a good feed now. So what's in the bucket? Well, this is their lunch. This is sprat. Sprat. It's like a little herring almost. Mm. And uh, they're going to be eating them whole. OK, now the idea is hold it by the tail and they'll come up and take it from you. Yeah. Come on, come penguins. Come on. Come on. Alrighty. Come on, penguins. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Hello. Great. Hey, you. Hey, yo. <laughs> They're very, very affectionate animals towards each other. And you'll often see these guys grooming and preening each other. So they're very affectionate. Um, see that? Oh. That's pretty good, oh. eh? Just goes to show how uh, well coordinated they are. Let's go to the water and I'll show you how graceful they are hunting in their natural habitat. Is that cold water? It's relatively cold, but they're used to it. They've got a very uh, well insulated lining of feathers there. And you see how quickly they snatch that prey and orientate the head first and then swallow. They have to feed like that because they're very competitive amongst each other. You know, they'll fight each other for food. So they're designed to, to be gluttons, to eat as quickly and as much as possible. Alrighty, that's us. You hear on a lot of documentaries that sea lions would hunt penguins. Is that really true? Well, seals do. Some of the bigger seals, like leopard seals. Um, these guys here, the Californian sea lions, um, not really so much. They will take seabirds on the odd occasion, but uh, chances of them meeting a penguin in their natural habitat is very slim. What would they eat? Well, these guys here um, are fed mackerel and sprat, and uh, in the wild, similar diet, and that also includes uh, some crustaceans, like crabs and lobsters. Um, and squid as well. Are they very playful? Very playful. It's basically just a swimming dog. You know, <laughs> they, uh, they're, they're very playful social animals uh, with a lot of energy. And uh, yeah, you can say these guys spend most of their day playing. Are they intelligent? They're extremely intelligent creatures. We see that firsthand every day when we train them. They, uh, they pick up so quickly. What they also do is watch and learn from the other sea lions. Mm. So yeah, I'd, I'd say one of the most intelligent animals I've worked with. Well, that's it. That's about all we have time for on today's show. The guys have just abandoned me. Oh yeah, they've all gone home. So now I have to clean up the place. So I'll see you all soon, yeah? Okay. Oh, this was so not in my contract. <laughs> <laughs>